disrupt it. Weird thing to happen. <laughs> Hello, one and all. Welcome to this edition of Kit's Corner. Being a fantastic day so far. It gives me no great joy. Well, I, I kind of, it kind of does because it gives me a lane to actually have the show and mention the things I mentioned. But Rachel Maddow is just an absolute scum of journalism. If I can even call her a journalist, she she's really just the scum of television personalities. So remember when Rachel Maddow nefariously said this and doubled down on absurd lies like this when she was trying to push, you know, saying that patients overdosing on ivermectin backed up rural Oklahoma hospitals and ambulances. The scariest one I've heard and seen of is people com coming in with vision loss, he said. So that was her trying to manifest the story that was proven debunked that... People taking horse to warmer ivermectin, as the pharmaceutical industry was trying to promote, is somehow clogging the hospitals, even though ivermectin is one of the most valued resources and it was one of the top essential drugs of the World Health Organization. And they were doing uh, advanced research on it to see if ivermectin was proven effective enough to actually treat people with COVID. And Rachel Maddow doubled down on this lie. So... Now, because of this Trump scandal and because Rachel Maddow is such a cheerleader when it comes to these criminal indictments of Donald Trump, she is once again doubling down on the lies, the propaganda, and the smearing to take down one of her most nefarious boogeymen. Because Rachel Maddow has Trump derangement syndrome, to coin the phrase. She, ever since 2016... She has just completely lost it, completely lost it, doubling down on the absurdity of lies and, 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 and misinformation and the propaganda and the malarkey of, of McCarthy smears and Russia gating and, and, and all the bullshit that spews out of her mouth. It's all because she fears Donald Trump. She fears the presidency of him. He, he fears, she fears that Donald Trump's presence in the White House or anything to do with politics so she has to come up with these absurd theories to try to back her conspiracies, to back her mishandled claims. So Aaron Monte points this out, and he says, um, Trump-Russia conspiracy theorist Rachel Maddow says, you have to wonder if the DOJ would drop Trump's case in exchange for him never running for office again. Lawrence O'Donnell, however, on the other hand, reminds her that this is exactly what Trump accuses the DOJ of trying to achieve. So all the years that Donald Trump has been saying that this is the thing, this is the thing that the DOJ was trying to construct of him. This is the, the deep state trying to go after me. It was a witch hunt. It turns out he was right. It turns out all the times they said this is a witch hunt or pr political prosecution. And this was used to try up tr uh, charges against me was absolutely right. And Lawrence O'Donnell, who again is another Trump derangement syndrome patient himself is proving Rachel Maddow wrong and reminding people that isn't this the exact same thing that Trump is accusing the deep state of doing? Isn't this exactly what Donald Trump has said year after year after year after all the absurd charges that were thrown against him? That the, that this is the DOJ in response to the establishment, the rest of the, the establishment trying to go after Donald Trump? So... Here's what he had to say to Rachel Maddow as they were passing off the baton in uh, in programming changes. Take a listen to this. You have to wonder if the Justice Department is considering whether there is some political solution to this criminal problem, whether part of the issue here is not just that Trump has committed crimes, but that Trump has committed crimes and plans on being back in the White House. Do they consider as part of a potential plea offer? something that would prescribe him, proscribe him from, from, from running for office again. I don't know. I, I would imagine if anything like that happened, that it would have to come. I love how when she makes that claim, she's kind of going in slowly. Like it's almost like she's trying to plead with Lawrence O'Donnell. Like, please, please, please. Can we just have this? Can we please find a reason to lock this guy up? So my, so my bed terrors can go away, please. 
I'm having night terrors on Donald Trump, please! My God, we had this guy on years on MSNB uh, on NBC, and we loved him, and we showed his op open podium when he was running for politics, but now he frames me. Please, Lawrence O'Donnell, please. Please, please, with a cherry on top. Can't we just l lock him up for something? Something. Like, it's like a little child begging for a cookie <laughs> before uh, before dinner. Like, look at, look at her body language. Watch this. You have to wonder if the Justice Department is considering whether there is some political solution to this criminal problem, whether part of the issue here is not just that Trump has committed crimes, She's but that Trump in. has committed crimes and plans on being back in the White House. Closer to the camera. Do they consider, as part of a potential plea offer, something that would prescribe him, proscribe him from, from, from running for office again? I don't know. I, I and she's biting her lip. She's biting her lip, hoping that Lawrence O'Donnell will say the exact same thing. Like, oh, yeah, I, I definitely agree with you because that's the corporate message that Comcast is paying me to say. My producers are exactly telling me that that's what I have to say. And that's journalism, right? That's corporate journalism, just to repeat what your producers keep telling you. Not actually going out and finding the story, investigating, act, actually asking questions. No, it's just repeating things you've heard in the newsroom. And Lawrence O'Donnell, Lawrence O'Donnell has this little millisecond of reminding people that Trump was actually right on this. I would imagine if anything like that happened, that it would have to come from the defense side of the negotiation, that the, mm. that the Trump team would, would say, oh, by the way, and with this, we will also, you know, drop out of the, uh, the race for president. Uh, otherwise, it would put the Justice Department in this position that Donald Trump claims they're in. You know, he claims they're trying to stop him, simply trying to stop him from becoming president again. And that's the only reason uh, they're doing this. So my guess, given those dynamics and the change, I think, in the way uh, the Justice Department <laughs> sees this in those 50 years since Spiro Agnew. Uh, and my guess is that Rachel's mind just burst into flames. That's why she did that head bob like, uh, yeah, I know, I know you're right. I know you're right, Lawrence. I know, I know, I know that. I know he said multiple times, but please, please give me something to lock this guy up. God. I can't believe what happened to Rachel Maddow. I honestly can't because back in the day, way back in the day, she was actually a decentable journalist. I, I, I kid you not. She was actually a decentable journalist back in the day. But because of Trump, because of the absurd charges that they try to throw time and time again, because of all the Russiagate BS that the the intelligence community and the uh, Defense Department and, and everybody was trying to, you know, rile up for the fact that a game show host was cohorted with Vladimir Putin in order to overthrow democracy, which, by the way, democracy doesn't exist in America because it was overthrown decades ago. And the fact that people are just waking up now just shows how completely clueless they are about the real world and not really seeing the bigger picture, including Rachel Maddow. And I don't know if it's just because of Trump. I don't know if it's, you know, she's just being paid to just lie like this. I don't know if she knows better and just deliberately lying to people or she like honestly believes this. Like, I, I don't know what it is. And considering this comes from a, you know, university graduated journalist program, I think she went to Columbia, I do believe. It's just the absurdity of this. And I almost feel embarrassed for her. I feel embarrassed sometimes for these corporate journalists that went off to these prestigious schools for journalism they get these lucrative jobs. They have this, this you know, big giant show with huge production, huge production value, all these ratings, all this stuff. And you get some asshole like me who's running circles around them. I'm running circles around these two because I'm asking questions. I'm getting to the bottom of things. I'm just curious on what the hell this indictment is about and how absurd this all is and pointing the pieces together. That's what journalism is supposed to be about. 
but Rachel Maddow and and Chris Hayes and and Anderson Cooper and Wolf Blitzer and Jake Tapper and all the rest of them have completely broken the state of journalism, which is why it comes down to people like me. And I, I you know, I I I feel good that it's opened a lane for me and other podcast YouTubers out there that are doing the same thing, but. At the same time, I almost feel bad for them. <laughs> I feel I feel bad because they went to they 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 dedicate their time to being a journalist, and this is the spew that pours out of their mouth. It just seems unlikely that they would reach into the political zone of the solution. Our politics does have to find a solution to this, but it might have to find that solution separate and apart from the criminal process. She is just internal denial right now. Just so much denial. Like, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I guess, I guess, yeah, you made a good point, but I didn't. Please, please, Lawrence, please do it for the viewers. Do it for my fans. Do it for all the Madoites out there. Please, find something. And she's just nonstop doing this. Nonstop doing this. Um... And I just want to show this again, because this is another hilarious take of Rachel Maddow's, again with Lawrence O'Donnell, because remember when they were trying to dig up uh, internal investigation on Trump using Deutsche Bank and how that was connected to Russia and using a Russian server to pass off money for, for business dealings internationally? You know, stuff that only Donald Trump has ever done, uh, not jo- you know, not Joe Biden and all the Ukraine money that he's passed off and all the deals with China and all the deals with other countries around the world. Not not that any other person in the White House has ever committed other than Donald Trump, apparently, because he's the only nefarious person that the, could ever come up with s- something like that. Um, this is what these two had to say. Hmm. This single source close to Deutsche Bank has told me that the Trump, Donald Trump's loan documents there show that he has co-signers. That's how he was able to obtain those loans. And that the co-signers are Russian oligarchs. What? <laughs> really? Hmm. This- that was even a hot take that even Rachel Maddow couldn't even take. Like, what? What? You're just going to give me that? You're going to give me that pass? Oh, my God. I'm going to run a Hail Mary and say that Donald Trump is running around with Russian oligarchs to co-sign my checks. Oh, my God. (laughs) Uh, And they said the news can't be funny. It's funny, but it's also sad. It's sad because this is supposed to be news programming. This is what people internalize, watch every single day and think they're getting the straight facts from these people. Straight information, newsworthy information. None of this is newsworthy. None of this is information. This is all, it makes TMZ seem better. It makes like those kind of shows. (laughs) Entertainment Tonight has more informational value than anything you watch on MSNBC or CNN or any of the big cable news outlets or the or the broadcast networks that's why people come to people like me to figure this stuff out so now coming into this indictment and now that rachel maddow has another reason to run a hell mary to find a way to dismantle trump because you know it's ruined her nightmares um it's ruined her perfect vision of america <laughs> So she goes on her uh, MSNBC and unbelievably, Rachel Maddow exposes, it, 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 it maybe unintentionally exposes the real reason why all these charges are manifesting and has nothing to do with actual criminal cases or actual investigative evidence and proof and claim that Donald Trump is a nefarious character. But it's been something that he's been saying, I've been saying, and everybody else has been saying for the longest time. And it's finally cluing to Rachel Maddow that she inadvertently 
just spoke the truth here. Court judges are supposed to. Now, I need to say that former President Trump has just started uh, making public remarks, just as he did on the evening of his first arraignment on criminal charges. That was April, when he was booked on 34 felony counts brought by the state of New York. Now, tonight, after his arraignment on federal felony charges, he's speaking again, this time to an audience of his supporters that's gathered for a, a campaign fundraiser tonight at his, his golf club and summer home in New Jersey. Um, we knew heading into this that he was planning to make these remarks. We are prepared for his pre-fundraiser remarks tonight to again be essentially a Trump campaign speech. Because of that, we do not intend to carry these remarks live. Um, as we have said before in these circumstances, there is a cost to us as a news organization to knowingly broadcast untrue things. We are here to bring you the news. It hurts our ability to do that if we live broadcast what we fully expect in advance to be a litany of lies and false accusations, no matter. So what Rachel Mao just admitted there is that in order to protect the viewers and the, <coughs> and the agenda of MSNBC, we have to pre-watch live events. We can't show you anything live. Because that'd be too much journalism. That'd be too much breaking news. We can't show you anything live, but we're going to give you a redemption from our view to make sure it's okay with you guys. Like, we're concerned about the viewer. It, it's like, it, when, did, when did MSNBC become a Yenta mother? Like, I can't show you this live, folks. I can't show you this live, kids. But I'm going to watch it for you. And then I'm going to give you a rendition of what I saw in that live clip just to make sure that there's no ins and outs. Just to make sure nobody's lying here. In other words, they're going to try to lie about a live event that they've already pre-watched. And only in the news world they could ever do this. Imagine if they did this in a sports broadcast. This is why I think I have more an admiration to sportscasters. Is because you can never do this in live sports. Can you imagine if they said, hey, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna pre-watch the Stanley Cup finals to make sure that the Florida fans or the Vegas fans don't get offended. We're gonna pre-watch the hockey game and then decide for ourselves what the score is. Imagine if they did that in sports. Yeah, it would ruin the entire point of sports and live TV. But I guess MSNBC has otherwise. They they have a different method. Which, again, why is it so controversial to show a campaign speech? This is a guy running for office. Why are you not just showing a live speech of his? You showed his empty podium multiple times for many hours. But you're not okay with them on stage speaking? Like, how, how how absurd do you have to be? How full of narcissistic BS do you have to be to tell your own audience this, that I can't show you things live because you, you are going to be in danger of lies and manipulation. Like, your audience is so stupid that they can't figure out what Donald Trump is saying and internalize it for themselves. I feel like Rachel Mao just insulted her own audience on television by doing this. Saying that you're so stupid that you can't watch things live. Because, oh my God, you might be propagandized. You might be moved by what Donald Trump is saying. He might have said something that deteriorates from the messaging of MSNBC. And that's controversial. That's conflicting to our on behalf. So that's why, again, another reason why they want to lock him up is because Donald Trump tends to say things that challenge the establishment, that conflict with the criminal cabal of the empire. And even though he's a real estate mogul himself and ties himself with the establishment, he does blurt things out time to time again. And that's why people like Rachel Maddow want him locked away forever. Same with Julian Assange. They want him locked away because Julian Assange revealed the darkness inside the U.S. oligarchy. And they don't want people like that. They don't want people to expose things. They want complicit people. 
They want people to just watch and follow and, and take directions, which is what Rachel Maddow is telling her audience to do. Who says them? And I do not say this with any glee. I hope it is clear that this is not a glib decision. <laughs> we take our responsibilities seriously. We revisit decisions like this all the time. We make the best call that we can in real time every time. But tonight, our call is this. We will monitor that speech by the newly indicted former president. We will not carry his remarks live. If he says anything newsworthy, we promise we will turn that right around and bring it back to you. Because <laughs> we don't want any more glib responses. <laughs> Rachel Maddow, the most famous gliberal. Who is doing due diligence is t putting the time and effort to watch the speeches before your very eyes to alter exactly what the speeches are about. It's, that's newsworthy. That is newsworthy. Not presenting the facts, not actually investigating what he said in the speeches, but we're going to alter it and make sure that Donald Trump it looks still looks guilty to you know calm my nerves, to calm my nightmares of a game show host that I probably used to adore back in the day. I, th I think Rachel Maddow even interviewed him once or a few times when he was on The Apprentice. I'm pretty sure that they've interviewed each other multiple times. But now because he's a politician, all of a sudden, oh my God, he's such, an, he's such a ghoul. He's a monster. He's a chaotic man. And people take this as newsworthy. I, I, I don't I don't understand how people could sit there and watch hours and hours of this and take this as information. They she just revealed to you that you're so stupid that we're the ones monitoring live events, live presidential campaign events that we're gonna alter and tell you our side of the story so that we can alter the facts for you. Because you're apparently that stupid to watch anything live. She just admitted that to you. And maybe it's because Rachel Maddow once admitted that she's not a journalist. So remember when Glenn Greenwald pointed this out on his Substack? So Rachel Maddow was once sued. And it says a court ruled Rachel Maddow's viewers know she offers exaggeration and opinion, not facts. Maddow's show is different than any typical news segment where anchors inform viewers about the daily news. An Obama appointed judge ruled. So she was once sued by, I believe it was OAN. It was either OAN or Newsmax. And because she made a claim that those two companies were Russian propagandists. They were owned by Russian oligarchs because they were providing a different perspective than the corporate mainstream media. And Rachel Maddow got sued by this. They uh, they fired back. OAN and, and Newsmax fi uh, went after her. And Rachel Maddow went on the defense and said, well, they can't go after me because I'm not a journalist. I'm an entertainer. So basically, she took the Alex Jones approach to the situation. Because... Instead of actually being forward and honest and say, yeah, I just did this because I'm a corporate stooge and I'm not really I'm not really informing people. She just said, I'm an entertainer, and I think people know that. But do they know that? Do they know that? Or do you tell your audience that you are watching the most trusted news organization on planet Earth because that is the corporate motto of MSNBC or whatever cable outlet you're part of to suck viewers in and propagandize them? By the masses. Do people actually know that Rachel Maddow is an exaggeration and offers nothing but infotainment, nothing informative, nothing journalistic? Do people actually know that? Or they just get suckered in because they think that MSNBC being a news organization would offer, I don't know, some point of news. That's just, again, more glimpses into the gl the liberal world of Rachel Maddow. I'm going to use that for now on. Gliberal. <laughs> I can't believe she said that on air. It's it's a glib tempt. <laughs> Donald Trump. Um, 
And let's not forget, too, that Rachel Maddow, with her derangement syndrome, um, still continues on, notoriously continues on the charade of Russiagate. And let's just remind people of where this Russiagate has led to in a montage of just one episode, including this. Russia, Vladimir Putin, Russia, 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 Russia hates Russia, 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 Putin, Russia's Russia, 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 Russian, 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 Russia, Russia, Moscow, Moscow, Russia, Russian, pro-Russian, Russian, Russia, Russian, 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 the Russians, Russian, Russian, Russia, Russians, Russians, Russia, Russian, 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 Russia, Russian, 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 Moscow, Russian, Russian, Russia, Putin, Russian, 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 Russian against us, Russians, Russians, Russia against the U.S. The Russians, Russia, Russia, Russian, 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 Russian government scheme. The Russians, Vladimir Putin, Russia, Vladimir Putin, Russia, Putin, Putin and Russia, Russia, Moscow, Russia, Russian, Russian, Russia, the Russians, Russian, Russians, Russia, Russia, Russian, Russian, Russia, Russia, Putin, 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 Russian, 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 Russia, the Soviet Empire, the second of the 20th century's great evils, communism, Russia, communism, Russia, assault by Russia, 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 Putin despises the West in general and the United States in particular, so. Soviet Empire, Russia, Russia, Russia. They're the adversary. They they want to bring us down the Soviet Union. Russia undermine the West. Soviet communist communists on the left. Russia. That does it for us tonight. We will see you again tomorrow. <laughs> and now, my friends, will hands down be the funniest red baiting episode of the Brady Bunch. That is a woman that needs a straight jacket, not a pantsuit, not an extra camera. She needs to be looked into and investigated. And oh my God, she needs, she needs, she needs help. <laughs> and like I said, this is why I kind of feel a little embarrassed for her because I don't think that old Rachel Maddow, the Rachel Maddow that once upon a time, people actually adored her would actually go down this path. I didn't think Donald Trump would be the person to completely break her brain. And it's happened to a lot of people, and I just feel sad for them. I feel sad for them that one individual, including someone that I personally don't like them myself, can ruin uh, perception and ruin principle because a game show host has intervened into your lifestyle. And... You know, regardless of feeling towards Donald Trump, I still have principles. I still have ethics. I still have, you know, a responsible an outlook to see and, and and have a perspective of all that's all that is out there. You know, I'm not going to single handedly be so narrow minded to prosecute Donald Trump that I'm just going to make up absurdities about him if they're not true. That's absurd. That's ridiculous. That's a conspiracy. And what Rachel Maddow is, is a conspiracy. She's a conspiracy artist. And she makes Alex Jones seem more like a regular person. And that and that takes a lot of work because Alex Jones is a bit of a wackadoo. But I, I, I give more respect to Alex Jones, a character like him, than someone like Rachel Maddow because Rachel Maddow definitely knows better she's a educated journalist so so she claims and this is the road that she's taken this being a mccarthyite piece of garbage establishment tool bag for the empire to promote the corporate neoliberalism bubble and spew it out to the masses and she just want to remind people once again let me show that glenn greenwald article that it's all exaggeration. There's no facts. There's no journalism. It's just her running her mouth because Donald Trump scares the bejesus out of her. And that is no journalism ethic whatsoever. Mm -hmm.